loyal, no. loyal. Loyal viewers. Loyal viewer one. Hey, Greg. Uh, uh, I'm not appearing on stream. You're time. not appearing on stream this time? I'm not appearing. That My little box right. that I hide in is missing. Uh, okay, hold on. My, my little box is missing. Why is your little box missing? Uh, am I being demoted? I'm being demoted to... to uh, oh, there we go. There we go. See, yes. everything is good. Everything is fine tonight. The I, technical I, difficulties have been mo mostly remedied. So... <laughs> Mostly, please, yes. Please, please bear with us tonight. Uh, hi, welcome and good evening to the eighth Zwartring uh, stream. The eighth already. Eight. Are we at eight? <laughs> it's the eighth already. I have not really uploaded eight? the last one yet, have I? Oh. I do not recall. Okay. Man, I have to get, I have to get busy. Okay. It's been a crazy week. But uh, it's time for swords tonight, and as we said earlier, me and Fran, we were discussing, swords make everything better. So, yep. no matter what your week has been, no matter where you have uh, struggled, at work, at home, at school, everything is fine now. It's swords time. So, If you're feeling down, pick up a sword. Exactly. All right. So, let's... Uh, Read on, and then I'll tell you what tonight will be about. Christy. Christy. All right. So, um, tonight, I want to refer back to what we discussed last week, because we had a fascinating discussion with one of our viewers, and I would like to revise some of the things I said about Zuken. And uh, from there... I would like to move on to the next technique, which is schnappen. Uh, and if we have time tonight, I would have liked to have a look at Durchwechseln, but I think that Durchwechseln might require its own uh, video at some point. I, I think that we should discuss that one separately. It's quite complicated. True, it is quite complicated, but uh, schnappen isn't. So, yes, Snappen is perfectly straightforward. Snappen is relatively straightforward. So, yeah, let's, okay, uh, let's, let's begin. Yeah, let's get into this. Hey, Farhan, uh, I'm looking yep. at my camera. I, I feel like I'm off center. Am I off center? Uh, you are off center. I am off Maybe center. Maybe turn the camera a bit to your left. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, no, other left. Uh, other left, yes should be better. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, due to reasons beyond my control, Ash got destroyed. Ash, Ash 2.0 got destroyed. I had to rebuild him, so I had to set up really quickly. Yeah, he misbehaved. <laughs> he misbe <laughs> misbehaved, yes. He got what was coming to him. He got what he deserved. Um, yeah, so last week we discussed Zuken and we discussed the Abnehmen. Abnehmen. Yes, we discussed Zuken and we discussed Abnehmen. And uh, I talked about Zuken and Abnehmen. Come, Ash, your presence is required. Where with Abnehmen, you made a cut, which was blocked by a firm block, and you raised your sword up, and then you cut over the other side. So, like maybe a little bit to the side. So, it's a cut block, and as you step left, I raise my sword up to the other side and cut in here. And one of the things I stressed was that you remained in bind for as long as you could, and then you cut to here. Um, whereas Zuken was, if he blocked closer to him and closer to your tip, that it would be better to pull back and to thrust over the other side. So it was the difference between a thrust and uh, a cut, whereas with Zuken, uh, that's the way I've always been taught, uh, which is, it's not wrong, this is definitely Zuken, all right? But Zuken is a little bit more than that, and I've had to do a little bit of discussion, because uh, 
one of uh, the other instructors from a group nearby, from uh, Singapore. Singapore, yes. Oh, Wait, I thought it was Riyadh. We can mention Singapore. Yeah. No, no, uh, it was uh, Singapore. It was Singapore. Okay. So yeah, uh, someone from uh, Singapore, famous, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. They uh, they mentioned that Zukan is also described as uh, simply pulling or yanking the sword. Which sounds an awful lot like the up name that we just described, where we cut and we yank the sword up, and then we cut over the other side. And that is true. I did some more research, right? I did some more reading because uh, this is basically what I've been teaching based on what I've learned, and that was like 15 years ago. Um, and I've come to some conclusions. The guy from Femus was completely correct. Uh, Zuken literally means yanking or pulling. And uh, Ringek actually describes it as a cutting move. He, he literally says, uh, cut over right in the bind, pull your sword up, and so that uh, pull your sword up and above. And he says, do this when he binds strongly on the sword. Uh, he binds, he cuts, he binds strongly on the sword, not on my, on the person, right? He's not attacking me, he's attacking, he's defending the sword. Pull up and cut down. And that is what he describes. And that's basically what we consider to be upnamen. So I cross reference that with how Ringek talks about upnamen and it's basically the same technique. However, with Zukun, he makes a few other mentions. He says, uh, you can also cut and pull before the swords bind as a sort of feint. So then it becomes a one-two feint where you, you cut before the sword's bind, you pull to the other side. So if you do that fast, you get like something like that. Um, this is also pulling. So I guess with Zuken, uh, Ringek means the movement of pulling your sword up out of the bind uh, to the other side. So this is a little bit of combination. So where did, so I, went further on research, uh, deeper into the Lichtenauer tradition. And I was wondering like, where does this, why do I know it wrong? Like where did my master go wrong? Where did Merlin go wrong? And Merlin is not one, he's a very thorough person. And I found my answers in a different manuscript. Uh, I found my answers in a manuscript called Pseudo Danzig. Uh, Danzig. Pseudo Peter von Danzig, yes. Pseudo Peter von Danzig, yes, that's the one. It is a manuscript that has an anonymous writer. We don't know who wrote it, but it's been attributed to Peter von Danzig. Although we don't know for sure if this is true or not. The thing is that uh, that manuscript and the Ringek manuscript, there is a lot of overlap. Like it uses, it straight up uses parts of the same uh, text, the same words to describe certain things. It's just that the pseudo von Danzig uh, Pseudo Peter from Lantic manuscript goes in a little bit more detail in, in a variety of techniques. And in Pseudo Peter from Lantic, he actually describes upnamen as the, the one two cut that I described. And more importantly, while he also describes Zuken in the way that Ringek describes it as yanking the sword up, right? He also has a very specific Zuken technique where he says, cut. And when the opponent binds strongly at the end of your sword, and it's interesting that he actually mentions the end of the sword, and then he says, uh, pull it back and then thrust it to the left side. There. And then that makes, that makes total sense. That makes complete sense. Um, I also found references to Zuken when it came to Duplirin, Duplirin and Motirin where basically the, the combination goes, this is a little bit for people who are already familiar with the player and I'm not gonna explain it now, that's for next week or next next week. But basically he says like, okay, so first you try to do the player in, and if he blocks that uh, by raising his sword up, you try to do the motir in, and if he tries to parry that aside, then you can pull the sword out and thrust at him again. So that's also a kind of zuken where uh, where you again pull the sword back to thrust over a different angle. 
So that's a little bit where I'm at. It's like, okay, I wasn't precisely wrong in my technique, but I was a little bit wrong in who I attributed it to. I attributed it to uh, Sigmund von Ringeck, and it wasn't not, not true. It was part of uh, the pseudo Peter from Danzig manuscript. And you know, that needed to be clarified. The Sukun is more, and I think it warrants that in future classes I might come back to Sukun to look at the specific mentions and the specific techniques for another time. Um, yeah, is there any feedback in the chat about this? Uh, Faris is asking the difference between Abnehmen and Zuken. Basically. Yeah, so, so that confounded me too, Faris. The difference between Abnehmen and Zuken, I started questioning like, <laughs> what exactly is the difference then? And I was like, I think Abnehmen is a kind of Zuken. Like Zuken is more or less the overarching concept that is uh, exemplified with a number of specific techniques, specific technique mentions. You'll, you'll notice that when you uh, search the manuscript for the reference of Zukun, like Zukun gets mentioned in, in a variety of techniques, different techniques, techniques with the Zork how, techniques with the Zorn how. And so it's more of a concept, like a, a, a move of the sort where you pull it back. And then Abnehmen is this very specific one, slide up, cut over the other side technique, which is a kind of Zukun. You see this in other techniques, uh, for example, with Nachreisen, we've discussed Nachreisen before, where Nachreisen is the principle of uh, attacking someone in, while they're preparing or after they've attacked uh, unsuccessfully. But it's also three very specific moves as described by Sigmund Ringeck. So you see that, that it's more often. And it's the same with Versetzen. Versetzen is the concept of blocking or parrying a, an attack. But it's also four specific techniques uh, with using the Meisterhauen to break certain guards. So you see that a lot in manuscripts where they use... Uh, specific techniques and concepts interchangeably. And it's really confusing. Really confusing. Yeah. So uh, I think Faris, what we we should uh he's asking whether it's like with tear is part of Winden. Uh, not so much that depends who you mm -hmm. ask. Uh depends who you ask. Winden, if you uh, ask Ring X, it's the same. It's, Ring X, the second wing, the winding is Mutirin. Uh, kind of, yeah. Kind of, yeah. But uh, if you look at later, if you talk to Meyer, uh, this is one of the things about Meyer that I do know, that he does winding as a specific principle. But again, that's future stuff. That's like we're Let's maybe not talk about Meyer. My, Meyer's definition of Zuken is completely different. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. No, I was talking about Myers winding. Yes. Uh, so it, it um, I think we could basically say that abne according to Peter von Danzig, uh, all abnamens are zukens. Not all zukens are. Not all zukens are abnamens. Yes, yes, that, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but definitely, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, hold it's on. material um, for future. Uh, what, what, hold on. Um, Niz is just in a different message, said something called the Das Noble Krieg with das no context. Noble Krieg. No, I have context. No, no context. No. Do I need I to go context. into that? Because that, that does imply Zuken. Yeah, Das Noble Krieg. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, fine. Let's I think we can this. leave that for another. Okay, fine. Another we'll we'll leave that when we get to Duplirin and Mutirin, because it's mentioned that Noble Kik is uh, mentioned with Mutirin and Duplirin. Yeah. Uh, I think I already mentioned, I believe I talked about the Noble Kik in a previous uh, episode. I mean, we've done this so many oh, times. Time. I don't remember it before. If I had an editor, it would be like flashback to previous episode. 
but no, I don't have an editor. What you get on YouTube are raw streams, so do your own searching. All right? Okay, so shall we move on to... Yes, let's move on. Okay, the fun so, stuff. Yeah, let's move on to fun stuff. So we were uh, talking about uh, different techniques and uh, that we can use to continue the attack because that's what we're talking about. This is basically what we in this live screen call grade two, which has no, absolutely no meaning towards any other club or, or participant. So maybe, nah, never mind. Um, but that is like techniques that you can use to continue the attack, to keep the initiative. So we saw that in, in the last two techniques with up name and right, I attack, and then I can immediately continue my attack. And with Zuken, the Zuken that I, uh, I'll be referring to Zuken as the one that I explained to, to show that like, you know, one is a, a cut and one is a thrust. So with Zuken, you pull back and then you continue your attack based on what kind of defense he places. So uh, Schnappen is interesting. Schnappen is what if your opponent cuts your sword down? What if your opponent defends with overwhelming strength, right? He cuts your sword down, he cuts your sword away. Maybe he's going in for a hangen, maybe he simply wants, he's less experienced and he just wants your sword to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> so uh, he, I'm going to attack, right? I'm, I'm attacking and he just, bam, he cuts my sword down to here, right? You see, maybe he's experienced and he does ansets. Maybe he's not experienced and, you know, he just, just cuts my sword aside. So what I need to do from this uh, moment is my sword gets a lot of, uh, gets a tap. He gets a lot of momentum imparted on it by the cut of the others. Now I can resist this momentum. I can, I can uh, stay back here and then I can like do, a, do another technique or I can like maybe start pushing up. But the fact of the matter is his sword is on top of my sword. So he can push with gravity, and I push against gravity. And if I was exceptionally strong, I could probably win that. But if I'm the same strength or less strength than my enemy, then I'm not going to win that. So, uh, and this is exactly what we do with Hangen, right? With Hangen, we lean into the sword, and, and he cannot, uh, and your opponent's not supposed to be able to push that away. So if I'm going to push that and he does hang and he's going to trust me. I don't want that to happen. I want uh, to be able to continue my attack. I need to know what do I need to do. So I cut at him and he cuts my sword down. Oh, no. So what I'm going to do is instead of fighting the momentum, I'm going to use the momentum. He cuts my sword down and my sword gets cut downwards. I'm going to use my left hand to make a rotating motion and guide that momentum back up in a cut while stepping to the left, right? And this is notably in, in concept, this is very different from up name and right? While the end result is the same where I attack over left, uh, the, 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 the idea is very different. So he cuts my sword down. I rotate my sword and I cut him up here, right? I don't need to use my right hand much. Right? And I find that the, the best way to do this is to have a loose grip so that the sword can uh, rotate in a pommel. And if you can, if you basically, if you can do this, right, I can give my sword pommel a little bit of rotational, a little bit of momentum, then I can, can throw my sword next to me, then you can do this. So, cut, he cuts me down. See how I bring my pommel up, right? My pommel up, and then rotate back down here. Okay, he keeps losing his head. You shall be the headless horseman tonight. One more time. Right. I cut. No, he cuts my sword down. Continue rotating. And what you get is you get a really fast one-two attack. Right? He thinks like, ha-ha, I shall cut his sword down with lots of force. Then he can never uh, recover from that if I, in time for me to uh, attack. But... Little does you know, I am prepared. I am a settled sword fighter, and I can rotate my sword down. Um, this, incidentally, this also works if he attacks me directly. But I do need to adjust my movement a smidgen. Come, extend your arms forward a little bit more. So he, in, rather than 
cutting at my sword, he cuts at my sword, and what I need to do is I need to raise my hands up in this case, in the sloping parry. So what happens is that he hits my sword, he's aiming at me, right? He would have hit me, but because I raise my hands up, his sword slides down my sword. And then it's the same movement, right? It's that same rotational movement with the pommel. So if he attacks the sword, the fastest way is to uh, keep your hand low, right? This is just faster. But if he attacks you, the person, you want to raise your hands up and let his sword slide down and then attack. Bam, anything to add? Uh, just a couple of things. A couple of things. For... So the initial cut down, I, I find that the situation where we first use the schnappen is uh, when opponent tries this kind of attack called the versets and the displacing cut. This is usually when we get it the most, uh, when it's the most useful or the most common situation. Displacing cut is just simply my opponent's attack or defense is basically to cut down hard on my sword to push it aside. Um, I was going to use a small sword. So uh basically the, so the display cut is always aimed at your flat trying to knock it down uh trying to displace your cut from its original trajectory at that point you, you can just do the schnappen so, uh, which is sasha said you sidestep you rotate the sword that's where i find uh it's most useful the other thing uh, i would like to say is that when you're doing the schnappen and this is something common to many students that, that when they're still learning, is they try to do a schnappen from their shoulders and they're trying to make a big overhead chop or they're trying to use their elbows to rotate the, the sword around. While this is possible, it's not really Lower. a schnappen. And what you, what you would gain in perceived strength, you lose in momentum because now you're moving your whole arm, you need more energy. You're not snapping anymore, you're just cutting over the other side. The schnappen should come from the wrist, as in you're rotating your wrist around. Uh, Sasha likes to release his grip. I don't, I'm just keeping a, my firm usual handshake grip on the side, letting it come around. But the most important thing is it's the wrist. It rotates at the wrist, do not rotate at the shoulders. Rotating at the wrist, like, uh, would, gets you what Sasha keeps telling you to do is that you want to make a small cut and you want to keep it low and you want to keep it close to the original target. Because if you yank your hands back, you are asking to get Nachreisen or um, you're going to get maybe Handendrücken uh, or Abschneiden uh, or, or countered in some embarrassing way when you could have just easily controlled his sword with it. Yeah, I, I like to uh, think about it in terms of uh, attack speed, basically, right? Because it's uh, like sword fighting. It's always you, your speed versus your opponent's reaction speed, right? If I can move faster than my opponent's reaction speed, I have a very good chance of l having my cut land. So the idea is that I could, uh, so, so the small rotational cut, as you can see, it's almost one fluid movement. Here, bump, and then there. Whereas if you raise your arms up too much, right, then you get like this huge cut. It's slower. It's a bigger movement. And it feels stronger. It, it That's definitely feels stronger, it. sure. But your sword is sharp. I mean, and pretend your sword is sharp. Sharp swords cut, right? Sharp swords don't damage your opponent through sheer blunt force trauma. They could but it's not what they're they really meant to do. They're meant to focus a lot of uh, the, the, uh, 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 enough force in a small surface area so that it can cut through clothing and tissue and bone and, and whatever. So it doesn't need to be that strong. A sword damages really quickly. Uh, anybody who's ever done test cutting can attest to this. Uh, side story time. One time I did, uh, went to a tournament in Germany and we did test cutting. And uh, the guy said, like, okay, for the test cutting, you need to have the perfect cut. Right? You need to do the perfect cut. Perfect cut. Perfect zone house from your shoulder. And then you step. And you bum. Right? 
strong cut. I was like, okay. I had never test cut before, so okay, fine. We spent like 20 minutes doing only Zornhaus. Zornhaus! Right? And he would be walking around. He would be like correcting your form. It's like, no! Now you're, you're cutting, so it has to be a strong cut from the shoulder. Okay, fine. We get eventually to the uh, cutting itself when the guy was uh, satisfied. Hey, uh, Sasha, sorry, sorry to interrupt. But yeah. you might want to change the main image back to yourself. Ah, yes. So uh, we were talking about... So he had a variety of swords lying around. Like, okay, a bunch of sharp swords. And like, okay, we cut the tatami mods together. Uh, we cut the tatami mods. And I thought, yeah, okay, first time, I'll pick the long sword. It's my favorite sword. I'm very good with it, so I'm going to use that. And I get ready. Strong sounds. Okay. Like we've practiced. All right, just like in the simulations, boy. And I do my cut and... I felt nothing, but the mat was cut neatly in twain. I was like, that is surprisingly easy. And if you've done t test cutting, you know, you, you can cut the mats a few times. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, hey, okay, that worked. Another split. Okay, that worked. Okay, what if, what if I backhanded? Yep, that works. Sork out? Yep, that works. <laughs> the guy after me, he picks up a sax, uh, uh, a short, like, arm length knife. Long knife, yeah. Long knife. And he casually strolls up to this tatami mat. And he's just like, flop, 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 flop. And just cuts four times without stepping, without moving. And it just falls to pieces. And nobody took it seriously after that. Like, everybody was doing, like different weird cuts that they've seen and they were like yeah what if i do this one guy tried to crimp like vertically cut the time on that mill that was less successful because it's time you want bends but all the same like swords are sharp swords are dangerous they cut through anything like butter and i could totally see why it was a dangerous weapon in a medieval age so you don't uh bring it back bring it back to the point i was trying to make you don't need a strong cut, right? You don't need some sort of shoulder super strength cut to disable your opponent. Like if you're Blosfechten, which was what most sword fighting was more or less based around, uh, you get, yeah, just, just a small cut, that uh, a small fast cut that lands in your opponent's neck. And bleh, that's what you want to do. Just a small cut there. It doesn't need to be a strong cut. So yeah, um, so the, you know, don't make it a big wide cut. You waste time and energy and effort, which is what your opponent can use against you. Because as usual, no technique is perfect. Even this one has counters. So yeah, um, yeah that's schnappen basically. Uh, interestingly, uh, Ringek makes another mention. I was a bit more prepared this time because I was like, I'm not going to be caught blindsided <laughs> twice. And uh, Ringek has a very interesting mention of a second schnappen where he says when you cut with an Unterhau here, and then he cuts down strongly on that, that you cut with your false edge here. Right? So you he, you unter, and he cuts that down, and you cut with a false edge into your opponent, uh, like that. Okay, yeah, ring says you can do it. Honestly, I've not practiced this one much. I do must say that when I now that I'm practicing, now that I'm seeing it, it's like okay, yeah, I can sort of recognize this. But so, unter how here, he cuts down strongly. And I snap in here, which is almost like a, either a zwerk or a uh, shield. Yeah, it kind of feel, it kind of almost feels so, like it should be a shield how. Yeah, it, it feels like it should be a shield how. But, Although curiously, uh, if you read that passage, Ringek also says it works if you're sitting in Alber. You don't have to be making a cut. Sitting in Alber. Yeah. yeah, if you're lying in Albert and he cuts at your sword from above. So that's that's a different uh, shopping that I've learned. Is uh, when he cuts your sword down like this, 
So then what you do is, uh, again, so he cuts down on your sword. My sword is down here, and he's pushing down on my sword. I've even seen this mentioned that if he cuts your sword down into the grass, because most of these duels were fought in grass so or in dirt, like you could push the sword in there and then sort of keep it there by, by exerting pressure on that. So he says, like, okay, then um, you pivot your sword forward like this, and then it sort of snaps out at a certain point, and you can do a sort of Shilhao-esque movement. Of course, we haven't discussed the Shilhao yet, so I'll just demonstrate it a few times to see how it goes. So here, he pushes down on the sword. I push my pommel forward, and then my sword snaps out and does this uh, horizontal, no, vertical cut, right? So cut this vertical cut downwards here. So yeah. So uh, without Ash, uh, let's, let's put you aside for a second. So you upwards cut. He cuts me down, and I make this cut. I make this rotational, and it's basically the same principle. He imparts momentum, which I use, which I redirect back into him. So two. Uh, if you want to practice this at home, this is what it should look like, right? If you don't have a partner. If you have a partner, then this is perfect. Because what you can do, uh, first I'll show the solo drill, and then you can, I'll show the drill what you can do if you have two people. So the solo drill, we have to imagine that we're getting hit, right? So first I make my attack. Uh, but before my attack lands, my sword goes sideways and down. And then I make the rotational move and cut to the other side. Stepping to the left. I make my attack, which gets deflected, and then I attack over left instead. One more time. Attack, deflection, or for sets in this case, and then attack over left. Attack, for sets in, and then over that side. As, uh, yeah. Show it from the other side. So you can see it from this side. Uh, attack here, resets, and, and then attack over the other side. Attack, resets, and, and you can you, you should clearly see that rotational movement of your 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 left hand. Your left hand should be doing the heavy lifting in this part, in this cut. For the other cut. As for the other cut, I attack from Unterhau, which just gets cut down, and I cut like this. So, Unterhau cut like this. One more time. Unterhau cut like this. Uh, maybe you want to do the Unterhau a bit higher up, as we're usually sure. telling people to do. Sure. So, Unterhau. Hi, Unterhau. I'm not a perfect person. Yeah, no, do what I, I, I say, know we're all. I, I know we're all shorter than you. We like. <laughs> I, I know that's how you've been doing it. Yeah, your, your I'm, aiming for for, I, I'm aiming at for. I'm aiming at Farhan height here. He's not kidding. I, <laughs> the height difference is that big. So uh, Unterhau, cut down, and then, so Unterhau. Resets and and then get down. So yeah, uh, you can practice that by yourself. Just have to imagine it. Uh, imagine a cut. But if you are with two people, you can change it a little bit to practice the schnappen really. And what you can do is one person, the person who does the schnappen, can extend the sword forward like this. And this is a little bit safer because then you don't have to start with a cut. So like this. And what the other person will do, the other person will try and sort of beat the sword sideways, right? So you don't have to attack the person, you attack the sword, it's a nice big target. You beat the sword sideways. So and what the other person then what the original person then has to do, he gets the sword beat sideways, is to use that momentum to make his attack. Uh word of warning here, word of caution. Uh if your sword gets attacked really hard, you have a lot of momentum. 
sometimes hard to stop that momentum. I have, and, and this is from personal experience, I have hit people in the head like this, not on, on purpose, but because there's so much momentum in there that, that I just hit them in the face. Couldn't stop in time, just too fast. So uh, start with the sword, so it gets pushed aside, and then you cut. The sword gets pushed aside. And once you feel like, okay, I've got a feel for that motion, I've got a feel for uh, my sword gets pushed aside and I cut, right? And I feel like, okay, I can do that. Then you can start adding the cut into it. So I cut and he pushed my sword down, cut, down, and then you make the cut. So with two people, you can sort of learn it in two steps, whereas with one person, it doesn't really matter because uh, you really just get, uh, it's really just important to get a feel for what does it feel like to snap that sword? Because it's really just a snapping motion, right? It's really just your sword gets imparted a lot of mo momentum and a lot of force. And you got to use that to cut your opponents. And doing that and, and it's kind of tricky. I, I was going to suggest that you demonstrate the cutting down versus and cut on Ash on Neo Ash, but uh, I just realized that we already broke one, so let's not break another. <laughs> uh, you mean uh, cutting down on a sword? Yeah. Uh, maybe you should demonstrate like what we mean when your sword gets cut down. Fine. Sorry, Ash, if I break another of your swords, but it's okay. It's just PVC anyway. So yeah. Um, so what that means is that Ash is like attacking me. Extend your let, let's go a bit slower to demonstrate the motion, and then yeah. you can do a full, full blast yeah, so to show Ash your is, power. Yeah, Ash is attacking me, so it it can be something as simple as just firmly blocking. Right, and you can see that I'm moving him sideways already simply by firmly blocking his sword, and and that's the tap that you're that you're looking for to do snapping with. Because it really, snuffin doesn't really work if if all I do is just, just block and he hit my sword. Because then, as soon as you do the snappin', right, you don't have enough momentum. So it becomes a very slow technique. And once you start doing that, the the one thing is that he becomes very vulnerable to, to just me doing an upnaming. Right? So he removes his sword to cut over the other side, and I could just cut to the left much, much faster than he can cut me to life. But if I impart momentum on that, not only is my sword, I need to, I, the defender, needs to recover from that momentum, but he, the attacker, can use that momentum. So I'm basically giving him energy at that point. Curse Newton and your second, second law, I think. A reaction uh, is an equal uh, and opposite reaction. Dude, I'm a sword fighter. I, I, I don't do science. Okay, fine. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so... And it gets worse if I start cutting down on this sword. Please, please don't... don't. So if I start cutting down on this sword, then I impart a lot of momentum on that. So if, for that regard, Snuppen works fantastically against the Krumpau. Your sword gets deflected, and, and you can just use that. So, can just see, he basically just snuffing by himself, and he's a dummy. Uh, speaking of which, you have somehow answered Faris' question. He was asking in the chat whether Schnappen is an effective counter to the Krumpau. Yes, Schnappen so, is an yes, effective yes, counter yes, to the Krumpau. <laughs> yes. As you just said, yes, it is. Oh uh, yeah, especially well, mind you, if it's a krumpau to the sword, if it's a krumpau to the hands, not so much. Um, there is another technique that is very similar. Do we still have time, Fran? How long have we been talking? Plenty of time. Plenty of time. We've only been on for like twenty. Perfect. We've only been online for like forty minutes. See, I told you we could do something really quickly. This is Durkvexel because Durkvexel operates a lot under the same principle. It operates under the principle of having an overwhelming defense on your sword, an overwhelming facet on your sword. 
basically the same as Snappen. So I have options. Um, Snappen works best if your sword gets hit somewhere in the middle. Because uh, when it gets hit uh, around your uh, center of gravity, the center of gravity of the sword, that energy transfer is particularly effective because it doesn't have to fight any leverage, right? So if I get hit in the middle of the sword, then snappen becomes really effective. But if I get hit along the tip, what happens is that he will push my tip a little bit, but I won't get enough momentum to really make that round cut. Plus, it's likely that his sword is closer to him Right? His sword is closer to him, so he makes a, a close defense. So this is more likely a strong block rather than like an actual cut down. And my sword gets deflected at the tip. And then it becomes uh, a lot less energy into my sword. He still deflects strongly, a lot less energy. But I can still use that energy, not to make a big-ass cut. I can use that energy to bypass his defense. So what I do is I cut. He blocks strongly, and my tip slightly gets dimpled down. And what I can do is I can go into an ox. Right? I can use that energy. My tip goes down. My sword goes up. I go into an ox. And as you notice, that almost automatically, I am free of the bind. I can dip my bind, my tip, underneath his sword and practice my answers and, and aim it back at him. And then thrust. And this is called Durchwechseln, or changing through. I change my cut into a thrust. But I found that it has so much in common with Schnappen as in when you can use it, because both of them work perfectly against a, a, a strong attack. Now, Durchwechseln works less if he attacks you lower on to your sword. Why? Because I need to make a bigger movement to dip underneath his defense. All right, so I am here, and I need to look, look, I need to rotate all the way down before I can thrust here. But if he defends much closer to himself, it becomes really easy. It's a very short movement. So Dirk uh Schnappen works better if he attacks. Like if he cuts down on my sword and if he attacks a lot closer to me. Whereas Dirk Rexon becomes really effective if he cuts at my tip instead. So what you get is this. I cut, he hits my tip, and I can go into an ox and thrust in here. Is that very similar to Zukun? Yes, kind of. With Zukun, as the one that I've explained, uh, pseudo Peter Danzig, Zukun. You pull back and then thrust from below. Whereas with Durkwechseln, you cut, rotate up. The main difference is uh, lies in how you leave the bind. With Durkwechseln, I rotate out of the bind. And with Zuken, I pull myself out of the bind. Two different, very specific, different movements uh, that you got to differentiate between. So... It's the principle of Durkwechsel. It's rotating out of the bind. Cut, rotate out of the bind, thrust him wherever you feel like. And again, this works best if he defends on your sword and if he defends with overwhelming strength. I'll do it 50 times while Farhan gives his meanings. <laughs> uh, so I think it's a bit important to understand Durkwechsel as a concept is not necessarily... Uh, only from this maneuver because it's it's described in a couple of different ways in the text. Uh, the way Sasha is doing it is yes, uh, one of the techniques. But uh, Dirk Wexen, the changing through is not necessarily just uh, I'm changing from a cut. My cut has been displaced, and then I'm going to a thrust. The changing through is the change from a cut to a thrust. Or a change from a uh, basically a change of attack from one side to the other side. It Mind that I'm doing mainly, both with this particular technique. I'm changing yes. from uh, to thrust. It is described from left as a to thrust. right. Uh, I think it's right. 
important to demonstrate. I've yeah, hold on, let me, let me maximize your shield, uh, shield screen. Yes, I've got a sword. There we go. Okay. So I still Dirk have forty Lexen. more to go. So yeah. So Dirk Lexen, uh basically, from my understanding and reading of the different treatises, comes in three types. You have the type Sasha has just th shown, which you're throwing a sword and then you're rotating up into an ox or a thrust position or along the other side. It's sometimes an ox, but sometimes I've done it uh, just thrust down the middle, whatever you get. Uh, the other technique is what done without any, wind, any binding. So it's a feint where I'm just thrusting before I'm cutting. Yeah, I was going to tell that later. Okay, fine. Wait, we're getting to that. Uh, we're getting that to one that. we're going to get to. The third one, the most important one, is from Langenort. Uh, I believe if you've done modern Olympic fencing and if you've done uh, saber styles, it's known as uh, disengage, where I'm in an extended forward guard. My sword binds with my opponent, and I dip my point beneath his cross guard beneath his hand and bring it up around the other side. So basically it's from, I've got my point pointed on his assist. He comes in maybe from my left. I dip my point, I come up under and I thrust around that side. So Dirk Lexen, very importantly, is a, uh, it's a change of attack direction. To, and that's what we have to remember. It's similar to the Zuken in that I'm changing my attack from one thing to another, but uh, it's focused heavily on the thrust instead of allowing for a cut instead. Yeah, that's I still I have 20 more to go, so I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know, man. Actually, I'm not, I, I'm not counting, really. I'm not counting. I don't know how you've many. Lost, you've lost. Lost. I've lost count. I think I still have 20 or something more to go. Uh, never mind. Okay. okay, let's talk a little bit about the... So so right now, the one that I showed was uh, the one where he cuts my sword and I rotate out of the bind. And the nice part about this is that his sword does not find much resistance to this. So if he really puts overwhelming force in this cut, right, what's going to happen is that he cuts, but his cut continues. Maybe if he practices onsets and he can still correct himself, but uh, if he's a novice, that uh, he will definitely have an issue. I should probably set myself back to the main screen. Yeah, you probably should. Not, not that one. That one. So yeah. So uh, he cuts. I escape the bind and thrust him in. The thing is, Ash, I disarmed you. Uh, the thing is that. I don't need to have the bind, right? If I have in my mind, I am going to do Duraflexlin, then I don't need to wait for his sword to bind with me because I have already stated that if you do the technique right, his sword more or less continues on his path. So there's really no, no need for me to actually bind with his sword. Uh, where's my sword? There's my sword. So what you get is he stands in his forward guard. I'm not aiming at me. I cut, but before I cut, I switch to the ox and I can attack him over left. So cut, switch to an ox, and I'll never have to touch his sword at all, which is fantastic, especially because uh, against beginning sword fighters, or, I will say it, Farhan has gotten me plenty of time with, with Dirk Wexen as well, because mainly... Dirk, Dirk Wexen works against everyone. You don't have to be a beginner. No, uh, but it works especially well against us, since we love our Krumpaus. Oh, yeah, I, I know. We really need to break that bad habit. Yeah. Krumpau against Krumpau. Double miss. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll get there. We to embarrass there. yourself. Yes. Okay, so cut. Before we bind, I switch through. I do a crexel to uh, that thrust. You see, I can rotate my sword around my opponent's hands and thrust in. 
Um, so yeah, then it becomes less of a bind and more of a failure, mm -hmm. which is a feint. Uh, but yeah, Turkish, a very fun technique, very effective. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Langen Ort one. Fran is absolutely correct. This is also a Turkish kind of way you switch through. It's like a, you dip your tip underneath the arm. This is particularly effective if you start in Langen Ort and you start annoying your opponent by, by sort of like fake thrusting at him. And he wants to cut your sword down and then you go like, so he's, I'm like fake thrusting and he cuts my sword down. <laughs> You dip your sword under that cut. He misses, and then I can uh, freely thrust him. But I don't like Longenort as a guard, right, to fight from. I always say but, your your basic attacks cut through Longenort, but you don't stay in Longenort. You shouldn't stay there because you're at maximum reach, right? I'm at maximum reach, and the only way I can attack him is by stepping forward. I can't thrust forward with my arms because my arms are already at maximum range. So like that like it's it's just attack range is too short. Like if he steps back or something like that, he does something else silly something silly then if you, you you reach him you don't reach him or you barely reach him. But it is a technique yeah. and you can practice it. Uh one person starts in Long and the other person cuts at it, and all the person has to do is to, to switch to Dorfex underneath the sword to uh, to make sure that the other opponent misses. It's uh, super frustrating, and it's nice to, a nice way to frustrate newbies. Uh, it's also a fantastic way to exercise your forearms. True. True. It's, I shall not it's deny. It's good exercise. So, yeah. Uh, hey, Faris has a question. All right. Uh, it says, for Dirk Wexen, for Dirk Wexen, does the initial cut have to be an Oberhau, or can he use any other initial cut? Uh, well, the Unterhau already goes to an Ox, so it's really hard to Dirk Wexen with that. But I suppose a Mittelhau could work. Mittelhau, Oberhau works nicely because the downwards angle helps me uh, dip my tip underneath his hand underneath his sword. That's usually how I teach it. But by all means, I would recommend to experiment with it. See, see if you can make it now work. Would I recommend it? I don't think I would recommend it. Just that, that over how cut into ox is just really nice. Yeah. Uh... So we've got another comment from uh, Indie Fish Tank. I have no idea who this is. But Hello, Indie Fish Tank. Thank you for your comment. Tank. Yes, uh, his comment is, is he's mentioning Destreza and Fabrice, which is saying that uh, those those systems like attacking with an extended arm. But there is a difference, I believe, with Destreza and Fabrice is that they have complex guards on their hilt, their rapier systems. So rapiers love using the extended arm long point. Mm, because uh, okay, I don't know. You're not going to get your hand chopped off. No, uh, I, I don't know the straight up, but I do have studied some Capoeiro. I know a little bit of rapier, not a lot, mind you. Um, but yeah, in in rapier fencing, what you have is like you have these extended guards with your arms almost extended, because it's more about the footwork and the um, dominating the line. So dominating the inside line or the outside line uh, of of the fight, so you get a lot more binding, winding kind of play, where you want your strong, the strong of your sword, you want it to be forward, so that you can uh, really make those pushes with your with your strong rather than with the weak of your sword. But since uh, rapier fighting, I don't know about the straighter, but Capoeira relies a lot on thrusts, and the thrusts really come from the from the feet more than from the from the arms. Whereas longsword fighting is much more a combination of thrusts and cuts. And while range is similar, hmm, good point. Uh, he also brings up. Uh... One three three sword and buckler attacking with an extended arm. 
which I can assure you, Langenort in one three three, at least the extended forward Langenort is a guard where the priest recommends that you do not sit in because that is the that is the position where you can be bound in the most ways because you're offering your sword forward your opponent has the most number of options in attacking you so they say well it exists it's not great to sit in langenort uh that's why in 133 they have those weird uh retracted langenorts where the sword's sometimes not even pointing forward with the pre special mm. And uh, one thing, uh, like based on that, uh, with long with long sword fighting, um, you always cut through Longhorns. It's just I'm not a big fan of of Longhorns. Uh, so Longhorns is definitely a guard that you, that you use to cut through and that you can end cuts in. But it's not a guard I like to start from. Uh, Longhorns is like a pit stop. I I'm passing it on my way to my actual destination. That's mm. generally how we view it. But uh, he is right, though. Peter von Danzig does love his Langenort. <laughs> we we will have to respectfully disagree with with. Uh, von I I think there's a, I think there's a lot of different styles and, and measures uh, to it. Yep. Um, uh, just, uh, you don't yeah. see Ringex sitting in Langenort very often. No. Interesting yeah. interesting topic uh, in the fish tank. Uh, glad you brought I it think up. that's our friend from FEMAS, I believe. That's all right. I think that's Aldrich, but uh, I can't be sure. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, yes. So, where did I leave off? Uh, Durkhaxen. We live. Yep. Durkhaxen. We're talking about Durkhaxen. So, we have the basic understanding of the technique. It's uh, cut with over, met with an overwhelming perception. I rotate around. To, and for me, it's really about that rotating action that makes it different from other uh, techniques. Right? You rotate out of the bind, whether you hit, whether you bind with his sword or not. I rotate underneath his sword, and then I can thrust in, surprising my opponent with the with either a very soft or a lack of bind. In tournament fighting, however, they. When you attack like this, uh, Fahan is correct when he says, like, it doesn't state that you have to go into an ox. He just says you have to uh, thrust at the left target, at the left high target. And I do that from an ox. What I've found in tournaments, or not what I have found, but what Merlin, my master, has found, and I'm going to share with you his perspective on this, is that you cut, you do a direction, you hit, and then whoop, you get hit from the other side because his sword is left unchecked, right? His sword goes down here, I hit here, and then he's just either bomb on my hands or he steps in and, and hits me on the head. Um, something like that. And this is due to the nature of tournament fighting where... You know, he isn't in excruciating pain because I just stabbed him in the throat, right? Or, or stabbed him in the face. He gets a knock, but then continues my attack, especially fighters who train for this because a lot of tournaments allow for after blows, right? I need to defend myself against the after blows. So this is what Merlin suggests, how you practice this technique, is where you cut, you wind under, but then you go into the right ox. Still stabbing to his left, but you go to the right ox. And with the right ox, you can uh, block this line of attack. So if he comes back to attack me, my sword is in the way. It's not perfect because he could, I could theoretically attack me from below, but it's already a step improvement. I'm not sure if I think that this is how the original masters intended it to be. Especially Ringex, since Ringex really was a, a, a more focus on, on the battle. So I think he would take into account, you know, wounds and, and disabling your opponent. But because there's an extra movement in there, it's slightly slower than this one where you stab in. Instead, you gotta 
cut, wind, and then stab in. It's a fraction uh, slower. I, I have a slightly different perspective on the this this particular one that Merlin's been talking about. Uh, so it's not so much it's not so much the Dirk Wexen with a bind with, with there is contact with uh I definitely agree with your version. It's faster. I, I um the turning of the sword into the right ox feels super awkward to me. But uh whenever I do it as say a failure or a feint, I, I don't pull into uh into ox at all, but rather I let my point drop down the middle line instead. That way I can come straight up into a right ox. I guess so, yeah. But yeah. Then you get less of that rotational action. You just dip your point. Yeah, it, it. You almost don't get the rotational action because. Uh, let, let's face it. It's described as you're dropping your point, and then raising your, uh, raising your guard up. I guess so. I guess. Yeah. So. so that is generally how I've approached it. Ryan, you take that back. What did he say? He said it's a very Meyer-esque move. Well, it's nice that Meyer based his work on the Lichtenauer tradition, which was designed and, and practiced by uh, Ringek, like, Ron, correct me, like 60 years before? 80 years uh, before? 100. 100 years before? Uh, Let's so, face it, Meyer uh, was no, ripped no. off. Uh, Meyer was actually working off Ringek's manuscript, from what we know. But, so, I, I'm just saying it, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, sure, it's, it's, it's Meyer-esque but Ring X describes yeah. it very clearly. As, yeah, dropping the point and then raising your blade into a high guard, into a high hanging guard and thrusting in. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, for, for anybody else watching, we don't actually have anything against Meyer. It's, just uh, it's a running... It's, that we do. It's a running joke between me and the uh, one of the Indonesian HEMA groups. Sure. In the same manner, we hate Fiori. Oh, that's just me. But we don't have any Fiori practitioners here, so it's, it's such a... It's Except such Lawrence. A, uh, I don't actually know if he's done much Fiori. Yes, yes, that's his core, uh, core uh, yeah, training. Uh, I think we're done with Dirk Wexen. I think so. Dirk uh, Wexen is one of my favorite techniques by far. It's uh, definitely one of my favorite techniques. I, I love using it. I love the idea behind it. Um, I would like to add ring access really early on. Strike to the man, defend on the man, sorry, defend on the man, so that Dirk Wexlund does not work. And what he means is as following, right? So Dirk Wexlund is I change through under his sword and then I cut. And I've mentioned that there's basically no change in momentum for his sword. Which is fine if he cuts at my sword, because if he cuts at my sword, he's not cutting at me. So that momentum goes into the air, goes into nothingness. But if he's cutting at me, right, he is extending his sword. He is cutting at me. I go underneath his sword and... Oh, what is this doing here? So yeah, if he, if he cuts, if he defends at me, like I cut at him and he cuts at me, and we would have ended up in the uh, Spechfenster part. And from there, I do my Durkrexlund. I basically run into his sword. Durkrexlund is hard countered by simply not attacking the sword, but by attacking the person. Uh, I, I believe it's basically, if he does a Zorn how, please do not do Durkrexlund. Yeah. You're not in for a good time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we done with Dirk Wexler? I guess so. One thing interesting is that Ring X says it really early on in his manu manuscript. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to think that he does that because it's such a real threat. Like he has, he has had some bad experiences with Dirk Wexler. Because like, he, he basically does it almost right after the initial introduction of the the Zettel. The I think it's also because it helps him. It's one of the easiest pieces of 
advice to give at any swordsman in that uh, attack this, this, this negates sword. so many techniques this True. negates so many things you can do so if you practice this you're already one step up yeah but we we do that in our basic attacks as well right mind your targets right it's one of the eight things that we discussed like you gotta you gotta attack you gotta attack the target and if you're practicing right as general advice uh so often do i see this if you're practicing like uh each of the techniques like if the technique isn't done with the right intent like attacking the person then oftentimes the te technique doesn't work because the distance between uh people or your sword positions get wonky um this is with a lot of lot of techniques where you're know, like okay i'm supposed to do this but it just doesn't end right or he is way too strong for me to do anything. Yes, is yeah, because he defended or attacked wrongly. He attacked you on your sword rather than on your person. You do the reflection specifically when he defends on the sword because it's such an effective technique to be against people. Uh, so Faris is asking about timing for Dirk Vexen. When is a good or bad timing? All right, so remember that each of these techniques are maintaining the war initiative i'm maintaining the war initiative so i need to be uh, all these techniques are done from the perspective of i do a zorn how and then right i do a zorn how and then he defends on the sword i can do a door fixing or i do a zorn how and then he cuts my sword down towards the middle okay then i do schnapp i do a zorn how and then he poses a Firm, uh, he poses a firm, good, solid block. Okay, I can do upnamen. Or he does, a, so I do a Zorn how, and then he defends close to his body. I can do a Zuken, the one that we discussed, not, not the general concept. So all of these techniques follow from me attacking and then following up, depending on the different defenses that he can do. I. That's the, that's the whole idea of last class, this class, and the coming few classes. Is they all start with, I do the zone how and then. Does that answer his question? Yes. Yep. So if you're talking about timing, you, you do it in the zone how. If you're talking specifically, how do I time it so that my sword doesn't bind with his, his defense, then I would say practice. You, you, you got to practice it against someone and just, just get that timing right. Uh, I can't tell you when to do it. You need to feel it out. Uh, yeah, Dura Crexland. Love it. Strongly recommend it. Five out of seven would eat with rice. Yeah. Uh... So uh, I think we're done techniques. Just one more thing I would like to talk about before we sign off, since we've been we've gone long over an hour, right? Uh, is classes. So the movement control order here in Malaysia has changed. The restrictions have been uh, loosened. So we are going back to classes. But yes. in a limited capacity, we are keeping them very small so uh, if you're already an existing student and you're in our uh, whatsapp group um, you can sign up there uh, you think we still have some more spots for monday i think so and if yeah. you want to join but you're not part of our whatsapp group you'll have to send us a text message either via whatsapp or via uh, you know whatsapp to my number or via uh, our facebook chat and we'll make yeah. uh, we'll t we can inform you whether there is still space or not. Yeah, we can make arrangements for that. Um, so classes is uh, the class, for example, for the time being, for for uh, new and existing students, we're going to on Monday long sword focus. Uh, there will be twelve spots in total, uh, three instructors. So sign up quickly for we'll have spots for beginning. Uh, revising and advanced students and then on wednesday we'll have for existing students only uh sword and buckler by fran yes 
we are sorry, Bakaya, we might also do a space for Saber if anybody's interested. Uh, Lawrence has agreed if anybody turns up for Saber, he will can do a inter quick introduction. So if you know if you want to do infantry Saber, that might be something you can show up and give a try. All right, very good. Uh, yeah, so classes are beginning again. But don't worry, for the time being, we're going to continue streaming every Thursday at 9 o'clock, unless we have technical issues like yesterday, then we'll do it on Friday. Uh, yep. Yeah, yesterday so, is just one of those days. Yeah. If we had trouble today, oh, goodness. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Let's just uh, sign off. Thank you all so much for coming, and thank you all for the lovely comments and discussion. It was fantastic. And I hope to see you all next week. Christy. Yeah. Watching. 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 Christy.